As of recording this, Madam Web released around two weeks ago. And I'm gonna be real, I didn't know about this movie's existence until like maybe three weeks prior. Great work advertising your movie there, Sony. I really gotta ask Sony here, why make a movie about Madam Web in the first place? She's a side character in the comics. She's a blind, crippled old woman with foresight. I don't see a lot of movie potential there. I understand that you didn't have a background in the comics or anything, but does that really justify making an entire feature film about it? This kind of feels like something that would take up like 10 to 15 minutes on a Disney Plus show. I assume Sony went through with making this movie after seeing the quote unquote success that Morbius received. I assume they're going to be churning out purposely bad movies now thinking they'll turn into the next Morbius or something. And I say that because, um, man, people are kind of thrashing this movie right now. Seriously, this thing is being destroyed by every single critic I see online. People are giving this movie as much mercy as one of Reiko's Mortal Kombat 1 fatalities. If you came here thinking I was gonna praise it, then I have some bad news for you. You probably already heard this from like five other people, but yeah, this uh, movie is not good. The story was very bland. The characters were really flat and boring. The cinematography and editing was straight up terrible. I'll give props to Sony. I didn't know it was possible to top Morbius in that department. And the dialogue is... Oh man. I will give the movie this. It's bad. It's a bad film. But it's not something I would call boring. There's a pretty big difference between boring movies and bad movies. For boring movies, they're a chore to get through. You keep finding yourself turning to the noose with your name on it in the corner of the room, wondering if finishing the movie is really worth it. But for bad movies, you don't really know what you're getting into. They're either complete train wrecks or laughably bad. And I love laughably bad movies. I'm going to humiliate your work of cinema no matter how much effort you put into it. Run and hide all you want because you will not escape me! Back on topic. I had time to waste so I thought, yeah, I might as well see this movie. I went with my mom. And I just want to say, I'm sorry mom. So um, mom, uh, how'd you like this movie that um, everyone hated? Oh, I agree with everyone. <laughs> it was a little bit painful. Yeah. This movie stars Madam Web, which yes, that's what I'm going to be referring to as the entire time. One thing you need to know about Madam Web is that she has an attitude. The plot is that Madam Web has to protect these three teenage girls with the personalities of 2x4 wooden planks. She has to save them from a homeless looking drug lord who is dubbed worse than a Japanese dub of Sesame Street. <laughs> he has a nightmare vision every night from the future that tells him that these three girls are gonna kill him one day, and he's trying to put a stop to it in the present time. I'm pretty sure that'd create a paradox, but whatever. The movie starts off with Madame Webb's mom in Peru. I'm pretty sure it's Peru. Don't fact check me on that. She finds a spider that can supposedly cure fatal diseases because we all know what cures lymphoma. Spiders. She's nine months pregnant, by the way. Anyway, she finds the spider she's looking for and is quickly betrayed by Drug Lord Man. Drug Lord takes the spider she found for himself. As they're fighting for it, he accidentally shoots her. Point blank. She survives for a little longer, but, um, no. She should have died instantly. I didn't know when else to bring this up, but Madame Webb's mom has a giant mole next to her nose. It's very distracting. As Madame Webb's mom is dying, she's rescued by a... Uh, by a... Uh, tribal spider person. It's the best description I could come up with, trust me. He takes her to his cult by jumping through the trees. And oh man, this is the first of many instances where the CGI is just so bad. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the funniest part to me was in the very beginning when the pregnant mom, after she gets shot, oh no. the guy's jumping through the trees holding her. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Looks like something out of a PS2 game. A PS2 yeah. game, exactly. Yeah. Anywho, Madam Web is born as given the powers of a spider through a special venom. I think so, at least. 
The cult leader tells Madam Webb's mom as she's dying that she will come back one day. You know, generic writing BS. And Madam Webb's mom dies. Before we move on, I just want to say the writing in this movie is really bad. I wouldn't call it awful, but it's very... Hmm, how do I describe it? It's like someone looked up synonyms for every single word in the original script and replaced them with words they thought sounded neat when they actually didn't. It kind of feels like something that ChatGPT would write. You know, very generic and tries to sound fancy when it ends up falling on its face. Basically like that. You do get used to it after a while though. We then cut to the future where it's now 2003. So you just know there's gonna be early 2000 songs in here. Madam Webb is a paramedic now. She has a partner played by actor Adam Scott. His character's name is Ben, but I'm gonna to refer to him as Joel because he looks like a Joel to me. Part of the movie introduces us to the three teenage girls I mentioned earlier. There's the awkward one, the nerd, and the rebel. She's so rebellious, guys. Screw capitalism, am I right? Anyways, she runs into each of the girls in the span of a day, I think. The one thing to note about the rebellious girl is that she flips off an ambulance. The one Madam Webb and Joel are driving almost hits her and she just stands in front of it, so they beep at her. I'd say they were 100% justified in beeping at her. She deserved it. Anyway, she flips off the ambulance and for some reason they felt the need to point it out. After she leaves, Madam Webb says, did she just flip off an ambulance? It is so forced. I legitimately wanted to shout, oh come on, in the theater. Madam Webb gets her powers when she helps someone get out of a car that flipped over on a bridge. After she helps them out, the car door shuts and falls off the bridge, trapping her inside. The car falls into the water and there's this trippy dream sequence where her powers awaken. This scene takes place underwater, and it's not like I have a fear of the ocean or anything. So this scene was fun to watch. No joke, this scene looks like something out of a 2007 music video because of the lighting. It's so grungy looking. You could probably tell me it was a cutscene from Infamous or Prototype and I'd believe you. Hmm, it's not edgy enough. There you go. It's super trippy, overly edited, and nauseating. Seriously, this is one of the many scenes that made me regret showing up to the theater. Anyway, Drug Lord from before is here and now has spider powers. He keeps having a nightmare about those three girls I just mentioned ending his life. Just want to say this now, but Drug Lord is dubbed horribly. His voice is dubbed over every scene he's in and it either doesn't match what he's saying or is out of sync. It's never one or the other. It is genuinely funny and I'd recommend seeing the movie for just this alone. Moving on, he has a secretary, I think, that has a bunch of computers way too advanced for 2003. She's able to identify the three girls in his nightmare vision somehow. I don't know how she was able to get clear images from the vision, but whatever. I'm not in the mood to dissect that. Madam Webb gets the ability of foresight. They have multiple scenes where she sees something before it happens and every time it happens there's a jump scare involved. And I'm talking like cheap indie horror game jump scares. It's obnoxious. Goodness, I'm not even halfway through. Madam Webb is on a train with the three girls and has a vision that they're all going to be killed by a drug lord. By the way, in the vision she just stands back and lets it happen. He snaps one of their necks and she just watches in horror. She snaps back to reality and lucky for her nothing has happened yet. She takes the girls and they leave. Drug Lord confronts them again, this time in a Spider-Man costume. But since they don't have the right to Spider-Man, I'm not going to call him that. This is Arachnid Guy. They escape Arachnid Guy and leave the train station, stealing a taxi on the way. Madam Webb takes the girls to a forest and leaves them there. Yeah, she leaves to look for more information about her visions, but I don't see the reasoning in this logic. <laughs> the three girls chat and start to get along. And these are my favorite scenes in the entire film. Yeah, just seeing these girls connect is honestly really cute. I'd honestly prefer if the movie was about them hanging out and growing as characters. I know I made fun of them earlier, but the chemistry is pretty nice, and the actresses did a good job conveying themselves as friends. You should've just made the movie about this. Screw Madam Webb. The girls leave even though they were told not to for their own safety. They find a conveniently placed diner. They stay there. Madam Webb comes back to the woods, and the girls aren't there, of course. 
She somehow finds a diner, and the girls are there. And she gets mad at them for finding food and shelter. Then Arachnid Guy breaks into the diner and kills the girls one by one. Yes, I'm serious. And I want to point out, Arachnid Guy seems to like killing people by choking them out. I don't know, most of his kills involve the neck, and I don't know why. Moving on, turns out that was all a vision. Madam Web drives to the diner and runs over Arachnid Guy before he kills them. I'm going to speed around the third act because it sucks. Madam Web takes the girls to a motel where they connect, of course. She teaches them CPR, and it's not plot relevant and doesn't come back later. Don't think about that. Madam Web leaves them with Joel. And you owe him big time after that one, sister. Madam Web goes to Peru and somehow finds that cult I mentioned before. Only the cult leader, though. He killed them all. Cult leader dunks her in a pool of water, and she learns more about herself and her abilities. Baptism. Joel is put into a situation where he has to leave his house with the three girls. I'm not explaining why. One of the many street cameras identifies the girls in the car, and arachnid guy is on the prowl. Madam Webb comes back, steals an ambulance, and comes to the rescue. Like, actually, she rescues the girls once again by hitting arachnid guy with the ambulance. This seems to be the only way she can fight, I swear. Her power is vehicular assault. Madam Webb takes the three girls to an abandoned building full of explosives, and they set most of them off using flares. This plan is pretty stupid. There is a cool sequence where Madam Webb keeps seeing things before they happen, and she stops the girls from being hit during the whole climax, and that's about it. Madam Webb somehow beats Arachnid Guy and they both fall off of the building. Arachnid Guy lands on concrete and is crushed under brand advertisement. The worst way to die. Madam Webb falls into the water and is hit by something. But I don't know where she's hit. One of the girls dives into the water, saves Madam Webb, and they all do CPR on her. Whoops. Sorry. I guess it was plot relevant, my bad. And then, y y you won't believe it guys, Madam Webb comes back to life! I know, right? It's crazy! Totally blew me away! Anyway, Madam Webb is revealed to now be blind when she wakes up. I don't know what happened in the water in order for that to occur. It was not conveyed well at all. Unless the water was doused with bleach, I don't see how she'd be blinded. Whatever. There's a nice scene after it, but it was so boring that I forgot it. That's how my brain works. The final scene I want to mention, because... <laughs> oh man. The final scene kills me. It's around a month later, I believe, and the three girls visit Madam Webb. She's apparently crippled now. Again, I don't know what the water did, but whatever. And so, she's in a wheelchair now. <laughs> and oh man, there's this bit where she moves up to them and it's so awkward. <laughs> it's just the background music and the sound of this doinky old electric wheelchair moving up to them. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> It was impossible to contain my laughter. I tried my hardest not to crack up. It was so hard. I recommend this movie for that alone. It's worth it. Anyway, she sees the future of the girls being superheroes, and it's cheesy because this movie gave no signs of being superhero related at all. She says a cringy line that the writers think sounds cool when it isn't, and the movie ends. My mom and I learned the hard way that this movie has no post credit scenes at all. So as soon as the credits start, you can book it. Keep note of that. Anyway, this movie was bad. But hey, at least it was a funny bad movie. At least for me. I'd recommend it, but only if it's with a friend. Are you gonna do that again? Okay. It's a perfect movie for a date or to see with friends. It's a fun experience to poke fun at it on the way home. There's a lot to laugh at. Please, go see it if you want to make fun of it. You won't be disappointed. I personally give it a 2 out of 10 from a quality standpoint, but in terms of entertainment value, I'd give it a 7. This movie sucks, and I love it. Best movie of the year. Oscar sweet. Anyway, if you liked this video, please consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it if you shared this video with anyone you think enjoy it. I don't have an outro for this. Bye.